for best results. Before you jump into this video, you should review kinematics, you should review definite integrals, you should review how to integrate tri trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, tangent, and you should make sure you have your distance peak time equations under lock. And we'll be doing this question. A good idea for you would be to attempt the question before watching my solution. Find this question, attempt it. So that way you can evaluate your solution with my solution and you learn much, much, much more than me. Alright, let's go. Part A, a motorist starts from point X and then travels 100 meters north due to a point Y at a constant speed of 5 meters per second. He stays at Y for 40 seconds and then travels at a constant speed of 100 meters per second for 200 meters due south down to a point Z. So X to Y to Z and the following great joy displacement time graph to display this information. Let me just show you what the graph would look like one time. So your graph will look something like that and there are some things that we need to find to be able to plot this graph um, effectively. One is the time to travel from to travel from x to y and you're using your formula this will be distance over speed and if we substitute our values given we will get 20 seconds. So this means that the time taken to go from x to y in the graph this time here lasted all of 20 seconds so you know that time to plot you also need to find the time taken to go from um, y to z that's the ending piece of the graph and it's so to know that when we plug in the values that we got the same answer another 20 seconds so it means that y to z and it's a little steeper than this in the graph that y to z time is 20 seconds now we know all the time that corresponds to different segments of the graph so your graph will look something like this I don't know how well you've seen it from there so I'll call it out from x to y took 20 seconds you know y is anywhere along this line and we stayed at y for some time and then we dropped and we stayed at y for 40 seconds and then we dropped down to z and it only took us 20 seconds to hit z but z dropped 200 meters so that pushed us into the negative side of this thing because we're going down south when we went up north down south up north down all right let go on to the next part the next two parts in this question ask us to determine average speed and average velocity so from your revision you should know that average speed is equal to distance over time, the total distance over the total time but average velocity is equal to the displacement over time so one is distance and one is displacement because these two are vector quantities which means direction is important and these two are scalar quantities which means direction is not important use absolute values so when I substitute here I will have simply 100 going north, 200 going south add up the times for each segment which gives me a nice answer of 3 and 3 quarter meters per second when solving average velocity similar but a key difference is that this displacement went south so I will need to indicate that by a negative sign which gives me an average velocity of negative 5 over 4 meters per second so what we are testing here is just the difference between speed and velocity and you should have that in your back pocket by revision so in part B we are told a particle starting from rest travels in a straight line with an acceleration A given by A is equal to cos T where T is the time in seconds. Find the velocity of the particle in terms of T. Alright, so we given A is equal to cos T. Alright, so we are asked to find the velocity but we are given this function A is equal to cos T. A function of acceleration but we ask to find velocity. So this is what you need to recall. You need to recall that velocity is equal to the integral of acceleration with respect to time. So you need to integrate this formula of acceleration here. 
So which means we are finding the integral of cos t with respect to time. Recall that when you integrate cosine, you get sine. So the answer is sine t, but it's plus c, constant of integration. We need to get rid of that. So you might be looking at the question wondering what sample values you could put in, but it's there, it's there. They said when the particle is at rest, it started off at rest, right? So it means that when time is zero, velocity was zero. So we can, we can use that. When t equals zero, velocity is also equal to zero. Now remember, this is v is equal to sine t plus c. So it means zero is equal to the sine of zero plus c. This gives a value of c is equal to zero. C didn't need to be zero, eh? it could be one or something else. But in this case it is. So now we can come big and bold and state that the velocity of the particle in terms of t, v is equal to sine t. That's the answer. Walk away smiling. And hold a tree marks for your worries one time. Alright, so we're down to the last, last part of the question. This was vibes. If you understood definite integral last year, that walk away from this question smiling because it's six marks. Eh? So we were asked to calculate the displacement of the particle in the interval during that interval from t is equal to pi and t is equal to 2 pi. First thing first, when you see pi and you're dealing with radians, eh? right? So um so you'd need to recall that to find displacement, we would have to um integrate who by velocity. Yeah, so it's like or we have to integrate um, acceleration to get velocity, we'll have to integrate um, velocity to get displacement. So if we substitute what we just got for V, V was sine T, right? So it's the integral of sine T with respect to T. The catch is understanding that this is a definite integral, so we'd want to put pi here and 2 pi here. These are the intervals between this interval, the lower and upper limit. From there, you can take it away. The integral of sine is negative cosine t you know we still need to put in those values 2 pi and pi this means we'll substitute those values we'll substitute firstly we'll substitute the top one 2 pi cos of 2 pi and we need to subtract oh lots of negative signs here buddy cos of pi when we plug this solely in our calculator we're going to get negative 1 cos of 2 pi is 1 and you should notice off the bat too, cos of pi would be negative 1. So this is negative, negative 1. That is where action taking place with them negative signs there. Don't get tired, up, eh? So this is just going to give us negative 2 units. And it kind of makes sense because the velocity during this whole time between pi and 2 pi is according to sine. And that between pi and 2 pi, the velocity is negative. So it means we will be going in a negative direction and remember this is displacement we are talking about here so we expect to get a negative answer all right so negative two units and that brings the question to a close so before we wrap up this last video on kinematics here are some of the important things you want to take away and just store in a nice place in your mind scalar quantities vector quantities distance speed displacement velocity the graphs that you need to know displacement time graphs velocity time graphs how to construct them how to work around questions that come with them, check it out. And this is the calculus of differentiating and integrating. That's what calculus is part of it. You need to know that velocity is differential of displacement. Displacement is S, ds dt. And displacement is equal to the integral of velocity. So it's a kind of vice versa relationship, right? Same thing for acceleration and velocity. If we take it up one, acceleration is the differential uh, with respect to time of velocity and velocity is the integral with respect to time of acceleration and the last thing you should know that your units for displacement is meters your units for velocity is meters per second and your units for acceleration is meters per second square that dog really get the last say by next time